Hi, I'm Lydia Hawk, and I'm the author of a series that will change how you think about becoming crone. And what does becoming crone even mean? Hi, I'm Joanne, the host of the Fabulous of 50 podcast, and we have such a juicy conversation for you today. You don't want to miss it. Join us inside. Welcome to the Fabulous at 50 podcast, where we are changing the aging narrative. I'm your host, Joanne Newaduck, and I'm thrilled to bring you stories that matter and celebrate your place in the world. As an advocate for lifelong learning, health, and women's empowerment, I believe it's never too late to live the life you've always imagined. Through lively and informative interviews with inspiring guests, We'll explore a wide range of topics relevant to our global sisterhood of vibrant, inquiring women just like you. Join me for today's episode and let's start changing the aging narrative together. Hello and welcome everyone to today's episode. I am so excited to bring you this conversation. As we were behind the scenes just getting started, we get into the conversation and I'm like, stop, let's save it for. Let's save it for today's episode because I am excited um, to continue this conversation. Today, we welcome the author of the Crone War series, Lydia M. Hawk. Welcome, welcome to today's show. Thank you so much. I am absolutely delighted to be here. Well, I have to say the reason I reached out to you and just to share the backstory of how we became connected was I, I was scrolling and then I, I saw this picture of this absolutely gorgeous woman with gray hair, looked powerful, looked confident. And I was drawn in like by this title, Becoming Crone. And I was like, I need to meet this author. <laughs> so I am, and I think I commented and you might've answered back and then I went in. So I am you know, over the moon that you're here to talk about that. And then when I asked you to be on today's uh, episode or, or to the Fab at 50 podcast, and I shared with you that the overall overarching title or theme of this season is changing the aging narrative. What popped into your mind? Oh my gosh, it, it's absolutely perfect because changing the aging narrative is exactly why I wrote these books because I... I was so tired of seeing women of a certain age portrayed in this stereotypical fashion in books, in, in well, in, across the spectrum of, of books and television and and movies. And I'm just I'm so tired of the you know, the dowager aunt and the, the woman that's running the quirky little bookstore. And we, I'm, I'm tired of us playing second fiddle. That's what I'm tired of, because we are nowhere yeah. near done with our lives. And we are we're powerful. And we've forgotten that society has mm. forgotten that. But we have forgotten that as well. So fabulous at 50 and beyond 50. And oh, yes, we certainly are. And I love the way you put that. <laughs> and and let's give credit for the quirky little person running that bookstore, because I think it, what I get from you is that what you want is the full spectrum of life, just like in our 20s, our 30s, our 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever. There is a full range of of abilities and and skills that we can bring to the world. Yes. And that woman that's running the quirky little bookstore is being undersold all the time in literature and you yep. name it, because we're, we're seeing just we're seeing that stereotypical slice of her. And I mean, she's lived a whole life. She has she's she's done so much and she's been so much and we never get to see that. And mm -hmm. I want to I want us to see the whole package. I want us to see mm -hmm. us being powerful again. Absolutely. And that's what I love about this, um, this book. Well, I'm just saying book because that's I have one right now. I want to go through the whole series. <laughs> what I really was drawn to was how you took basically an unassuming ordinary woman that was, you know, she's kind of like me. <laughs> I'm the one stepping forward here. 
And I think that was incredible. And then put it into the story. So what I want to do is climb in your brain a little bit here and go, how did you come up with this story? So, and, and, and I'll, sp- I'll qualify my question because I've, I've talked to quite a few different authors and what I have found is that some of them, they have like a, like a storyboard and it's all laid out. Whereas others, as they're writing it, it unfolds. Like I had one woman say, I'm so excited to go find out what happens next. So I'm curious if you can <laughs> share, which is it for you? It is very much the, I'm, I'm so excited to find out what happens next. <laughs> I love that. And the, the story actually started with a pendant that I found at a flea market and I bought it and it was $5. I remember it. And I, I picked it up because I knew that there was a story in it. It felt like a portal to another world to me. Oh, I and, shivers. Oh, I know. Right. And then it <laughs> sat, it sat in my jewelry box for like years. And I mm. always thought that the story would be about some young person, you know, because it's always the youngster that goes off and saves the world. And then Mm -hmm. I I think I must have been probably late 50s. And I started thinking, why is it always the young person who gets to go off and save the world? And I started bouncing the idea around of having an older heroine. Um, Paranormal women's fiction is a a sub, sub, sub genre of the urban fantasy world. And Mm -hmm. the the authors are writing uh, books for 40 and up. And that's awesome. It really is, but Mm -hmm. it's still not me. It's not addressing my stage of life. Um, Mm -hmm. So I wanted, um, I've always liked pushing the envelope just a little bit. (laughs) And so I did that with this. And I I floated the idea of um, a much older hero. And I I wanted 60. And my agent went, this is too old. And then I talked to an editor at a conference and she was in her 70s herself. And she's like, I like this. And I went, done. So I wrote the book and ultimately did not send it in to her. I decided to publish uh, myself because I've, okay. I've, got, I've got a bit of a background in independent publishing at this stage. Uh, so I know what I'm doing. And okay. it, uh, traditional publishing can be very, very, very slow. And I did not okay. want to miss the boat because I could see this market opening up with the paranormal women's fiction. You know, they were starting to write, you know, closer to 50. And I'm like, mm, I, 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 for the once in my life, I wanted to be on the leading edge of this. <laughs> Good for so you. I made Claire 60 years old. And I'm telling you, the feedback that I have had from readers who are just so happy to see themselves reflected, uh, it's it is it's been st- a stunning for me, just absolutely stunning the the way that these books well, I have reached to people. That. Like just on the Facebook, I, you know, when I go in, I when I make a comment, I don't just make a comment. I like to read what other people are saying. I do, and too. I was like, <laughs> yes, I was like liking them and going down the line. People were really interested, yeah. and. I, and I'm just going to throw in there just to add in. It's not just, I personally think it's not just about the reader identifying with herself. I think that's true, but I also <laughs> love this type of um, stepping up and really being seen as stepping into the role of a role model. Let's yes. be a role model for young women that. Yes. It's not just you have to have it all together now and that your life is downhill after a certain age. I remember what really pulled me. I think I'm doing what I'm doing now because I was at events when I was younger Mm -hmm. and I saw some really like high energy, vivacious. Like I saw this woman, she had short, spiky gray hair and she was just, I don't know. She just had it to get up. Like I suddenly felt like I'm not even grown up yet. Like (laughs) I, I was just like, I want to be like her. I want to, I want to have that energy and keep learning and keep moving on until, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I like my days of just relaxing as well. But I think it's really important that we as women, once we hit like midlife and beyond 
still share our gifts with the world. We are the mentors. We're showing the way. We're the crones. We are the women of wisdom and power. And I, I chose the titles for the books very, very deliberately because crone had come to mean something so negative. And know. that's Old not, hat. I and know, not- but that's not what it was intended to be. A crone exactly. is, is a woman of wisdom and power. She's one of the three faces of the goddess. You have your maiden, yeah. you have your mother, and you have your crone. And we're important. We're, we're vital. Absolutely. You know what you'll love, Lydia, is um, I know my listeners, for some have, and if you go back in previous uh, episodes, um, Sharon Karn, who is the co-founder of Sound Wellness Institute, is where I did all mm-hmm. of my sound practitioner training. I was, it was so amazing. A couple of years ago, she had a croning ceremony on her for her mm. 70th birthday. And, and each person, and so she chose someone to represent maiden and they gave a little speech. I actually was chosen to represent mother and, oh, and did a speech on that at the time. And then the croning, and it was a beautiful ceremony. I, I'd love to hear your opinion on, I, I think that at least in North America, we have sadly come too far away from ceremony and from rituals and from from milestones, like recognizing them. And I think to honor that transition and not just, oh, you're fading away and getting older, but to go, you are now in a new chapter and this is what you're bringing and honoring each phase of life. Like, what's your thoughts on that? I love that idea. I know that croning ceremonies are becoming, uh, they're more talked about. I don't know how Mm -hmm. they're more commonplace, but with social media, we're hearing about them more. Right. Uh, but interestingly, we're marking <laughs> we're marking kindergarten graduations and preschool <laughs> graduations and grade <laughs> one grad. And I'm like, now wait a minute. And those are all wonderful things, and we want to build that self esteem and that specialness in our children, absolutely. But it, we we've lost sight of our own importance as we age, and society is you know, just. I'm sorry, but they kicked us to the curb. They really have. You hit a certain age and you know, you, you're not a sex object anymore. You can't be a mother anymore. And so you're washed up, you're done, you're a has-been. And it's we we carry so much knowledge and wisdom, and it is it's being lost because we've We've forgotten, we've lost our own voices. And I think that the rituals and the ceremonies would inspire us to to find those voices and to use those voices and to celebrate those voices. We need to celebrate ourselves. I love the idea of the ceremonies and the rituals. Yeah, yeah. As you were just talking then, what came to mind for me is the importance of both um, let's say gathering as women in circles. So that's oh, like, we have the fabulous, uh, the fab soul circle is our membership. And we have a weekly call where we come together. So that is where we're sort of a cohort, you know, like women in midlife. But I also believe in the importance of also having multi-generational circles. Yes. I, I really would love to see more, more coming together where you have right from like 18 to I'm not even going to say 80, you know, like 108, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. And there's more of that generational sharing and, and wisdom and honoring. So um, kudos to you with your books. Now, uh, for the listener that has not heard about your books yet, can you give us a brief summary without giving any, um, you know, spoiler alerts? No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Well, essentially, it is a, it's a 60-year-old everyday grandmother. Uh, she's hit menopause. She's, her husband has, been, as too often happens, her husband has left and he's got his whole other life. And she's feeling lonely. She's feeling mm-hmm. irrelevant. Uh, mm-hmm. but ties with her son are not good. So she's feeling very, very lost. And she, yeah. on her 60th birthday, wishes for 
purpose. And man, you got to be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I know. I was always taught, be careful for what you wish or pray for. You might just get it, but in yeah, a different and- way. <laughs> and she does. I mean, she ends up, she, her grandson gives her a pendant for her birthday and it ah. is, it leads her into a world of magic that she didn't even know existed. Uh, and she discovers that she is a very powerful crone who is mm. destined to help save the world. So that is in the first of uh, currently four and books. And it from, from there. there. Oh, it does. It does. And it's really, it's, the books are, yes, there's magic and mayhem and there's, there's all kinds of battles and, and things and so on. But the books are about Claire finding her, beyond her magic, she, it's about her finding her power. And power and magic are not always the same thing. No. So it's I love that. That is fantastic. <laughs> I'm excited to read on and, and keep going. Now, before we get into other kind of bits of conversation here, share where people can get your the first of all, how many books are in the series? There's currently four in the series. Book five will release in April. And Amazing. Yes. After that, and not where can quite we find sure. it? You can find the in paperback. If a lot of your readers are paperback readers, they can order it from any of the bookstores. It's online. Okay. Uh, you can find a whole bunch of links on my website at LydiaHawkBooks.com. And that's Hawk with an E. Okay. And Lydia, L-Y-D-I-A. L-Y, yeah. Okay. And we will make sure, check the show notes. We'll put all, we'll put Lydia's bio in there. We'll put some contact website and what you can do there. So four books out right now, are any of them on, so they can also get it maybe on Kindle or something like on Oh, they're digital? all in ebook. They're all in digital yep. and uh, Becoming Audio? Crone. Yep. Becoming Crone and A Gathering of Crones. The first two books are on audio now. And Scribd is my audio publisher and they have just contracted for book three. It is in production and they are interested in books four and five. So fingers crossed. Excellent. Excellent. So that's (laughs) Scribd's. So not like people often associate audio with audible but audible is a different platform becoming crone is now available on audible as well okay so they yeah script is a a subscription service and they produce on their own site first and if you do well then they put you out wide so becoming Uh crone has gone wide and a gathering of crones should follow soon kudos kudos that's fantastic congratulations that's to me, it's like you make it big when you. Oh, I just, I'm so about. excited. <laughs> I do. I I read. I mean, I love yeah. reading, and I know that. So the women that are in our Fab Soul Circle, we have. Um, just as a reminder, we have each week is a different theme. So we have a self care theme, we have a movement theme, a conversation, but we have a we call it books and babble. And I'm going to interject here. You are going to be a guest where people I'm can so excited. Ask, interact with you live. <laughs> Live and in person on your side of the Zoom. <laughs> um, I was just going to look up the date. Remind me the date. It's two, the last Tuesday of October, right? I believe but, so. Yes, because we timed it for Halloween. That's right. So the 24th. So it's yep. exactly one week before Halloween. It so is. So on the 24th at 7 p.m. on uh, Mountain Time, because that's okay. my time. Uh, That's keeping me up past my bedtime. (laughs) It's going to be past your bedtime. It's okay. I will stay up late for this. Are you kidding me? I'm so excited. Exactly. So if you are not yet one of our members, please go to our website and join. It is priced like a Netflix subscription. It's less than $20 a month to be a member for fab at 50 and you can come to this meeting and we can interact and ask you so many more questions and get a little bit more of the inside scoop on that. Now I have another question for you. <laughs> Poof out of my mind here. Uh, we're talking about the different books. Oh, I know is you talked about um, the pendants being yes. your inspiration and then you know, how Claire, you wanted a powerful older woman that steps into, you know, her power, discovers it, goes on the the hero's journey quest. Yeah. 
How though, I just, like, I just always curious, <laughs> how though did you envision this? Like, did you, like, what spurred that on? Like, how did, it, or, or really as you're writing, do you feel like you're like downloading? It's just divine intervention type thing. I do now. That okay. first book, I struggled with that first book. I, I oh, rewrote okay. the first half of that book. I kid you not, five times. <sighs> I wrote it in the first person. I wrote it in the third person. I went back to the first person. I ditched everything. It started from scratch. It was a really difficult book to write. And I recognize now that it is because Claire, uh, there, there's a lot of me in Claire. That okay. said, there's a lot of every single woman I know who is in Claire as well, because we've all been through so many of the same struggles and so many of the same situations. And I just, it was hard writing someone that I identified so strongly with. Mm. She she felt so real. She wasn't an invention. And that made it very difficult. And it took me a while to wrap my mind around it. And well, now you're being she has vulnerable. You're yes. sharing, you know, and, and yes. what will people and think about that this? Was scary. And, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wonder <laughs> sometimes people that are not authors, whether or not I, I appreciate you sharing this because I think people that are not authors, um, there's not, there's just, it, it, well, really, it's like people who are not what we are at mm -hmm. times don't necessarily know what we go through. Like I, people read a book and, and they can't imagine that somebody's rewritten it five times in all different, <laughs> you know, from all different perspectives. There's a lot of time and energy that goes into it. So very there much is. kudos to you. But yeah. it's, it's it, I mean, now the, the process, I, Claire writes herself at this point. I have mm. so many more ideas than I can get down. And I, I mean, she, she's become her own person. And I think that the I first mean, book was having to separate her from me. So. Okay. Yeah. So going along that line, let's switch a little bit more to you. I'm curious because you talked about you really wanted a powerful woman in midlife or even heading more towards grown like a little bit mm -hmm. older what what shifted for you let's say with this being fab at 50 what what shifted in your life in your 50s from say previously was there did you notice a shift <laughs> um, I have to watch my language here um, <laughs> I, I ran out of certain things to give <laughs> and the older I got the fewer I had <laughs> so um <laughs> But read, read the between things, the lines, people. Right, read, read between, between those the lines, lines, people. <laughs> I'll, I'll summarize so, it. Yeah, yes. Almost every woman that I speak to in interview when I ask this question, the commonality is that the filter falls off. Oh, it does. <laughs> it and, does. And, and, and I found that, like, I... At the time that I started writing the series, I was struggling with my own relationships with my two oldest daughters, um, and we, we'd kind of grown apart. They they were young women, they were newly married, and they were out there doing their own thing, and, and we didn't have a lot in common. Mm. And it was it was hard. It was really hard. They've since both become mothers and I've grown in importance in their eyes again because you know I I actually have I, I have some wisdom. <laughs> so the yes. older they got, the smarter I got, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but uh, you know, I, I could feel Claire and and so the, the shift was the shift, the shift for me was in letting go. Mm. It was in truly letting go of my children and not, not mothering anymore. It was in letting go of so many other things in my life that, that, that I just don't control. And honestly, it was putting the focus back on me. Mm -hmm. Because I had yeah. been a wife and a mother, and yes, I'd had jobs in, in various careers, and but I'd been a wife and a mother. I was a stay-at-home mom for a very long time. Our youngest yeah. daughter is on the Me autism too. spectrum, so I mm -hmm. homeschooled for a number, number of years, and I was very involved. 
and then I wasn't needed anymore. <laughs> it was kind of like, um, yeah. now what? So the shift for me yeah. came in in actually making the decision to that it was okay for me to put the focus on myself. It was okay for me to be. I, I'm going to, I literally want to, well, I am recording. I was going to say, I want to record what you're saying. I am recording what you're saying. Good job. Well done. <laughs> hey, I, you are speaking the language of what Fabulous at 50 is all about. It is often women start to feel irrelevant. We what do. was important in their life. Like they, maybe they were super involved with the hockey team because their kids were in hockey and so forth. But at that empty nest becomes like truly a syndrome or menopause, that menopause madness or what next, or, you know, is this the career I still want to do? Or like yourself and for myself too, um, if you chose, and many women in our age category mm -hmm. uh, were stay-at-home moms or put their careers on hold. I put mine yeah. on hold and then what next? Yeah. And so the fact that you found your passion, your skill, and you're sharing it with the world is incredible, which leads me into my next question. Go for uh, it. We have maybe about five minutes left here on our recording. It's gone so fast. <laughs> if you were to share with our listening audience sort of three pearls of wisdom or three, just three sort of ideas, philosophies of how you live or what you feel is helpful, what would they be? One of them is, is definitely you are not in control. So let mm. it go. The, the more of the letting go that I do, the, the better the entire world around me seems to run because, you know, the sun still comes up and the sun still goes down and I'm mm -hmm. not in control. And that was a hard lesson for me. And mm -hmm. I mean, if the, the sooner that you can embrace that and, and just be present in yourself, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I'm a late comer, but I, I've I've learned meditation. And mm -hmm. if you haven't started meditating, that's my other pearl of wisdom. Start right. meditating, because oh my gosh, it is life altering. It is absolutely life altering. And the third one is, you know what? It's just going to keep getting better. You hit forty, and you 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 hit forty, and you think, okay, I'm forty, and I'm strong, and I'm, and then you hit fifty, and it's like, and then. You, you hit 60 and it's like, okay, this is like really cool. <laughs> it's like, I, I've, I'm still here and I, I've, I've still got so much. And 60 is not nearly as old as I thought it was when I was 40 or 30. It's, I, I still feel young. I love that. That's a great way of putting it. Relevant. <laughs> yeah. I remember talking to my grandfather when he was 80. Now he lived to 98 years, 99 years old, actually. And when he was 80, he goes, you know, I look in this mirror and I wonder who this old man is. Because he goes, I really don't feel any different inside. Oh, I know. I know. My body keeps telling me otherwise when I overdo things. We've, we've had this massive yard project going on this year. And I've been hauling mulch and soil. And there are some days when my body is like, really, woman? Really? Because <laughs> <laughs> in my head, I'm still 30. So. Yeah. It's, so keep going. Yeah, our bodies can react. But, uh, but our wisdom is here, our intelligence, the fact that we understand that our minds have that neuroplasticity and we uh, can keep learning. The best way to keep, ward off dementia uh, is to keep learning something every is. year. It yeah. is. And, and again, okay, that now I want four pearls of wisdom because that's the yeah, other thing. Yeah, go for it. You can have it's five. Just, Let's go for five learn. today. Let's learn, grow always learn, always grow. There's something, there's something, one of the, the meditations I do is it's, I, I wake up in the morning now and the very first thoughts across my mind are it, uh, today is a beautiful day. Today is a great day. Today I am going to learn something new. Oh, I and I love that. I mean, I have I actually it. trained myself so that those are my first three thoughts in the morning now. It took months, Amazing. but I just, Amazing. I love what were they? Today, today is a beautiful day. Today is a beautiful day. Today is a great day. Today I am going to learn something new. I and love it's it. that learn something new. I mean, that gets, and it can be the littlest thing. 
it can be, you know, the rabbit hole on the internet that you go down and you're like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> but you've learned something new. But always we're learn. Twins always here. Grow. I when I <laughs> when I went uh like at, after a period of time and my kids were growing or so in, in my late forties, I went back to university and reestablished as a nurse. Wow. And, yeah. <laughs> Good for I you. Registration law. And yeah, I, I, honestly, you want to kick your middle-aged brain into gear, go back to university. Did that and then started working. And I found that what I did, instead of being stressed out about if I didn't know something, mm -hmm. I switched, you know, we switched from the draining side of thought to the upside when I do the belief reparenting, where I work that with my clients. So I trained myself that every time I learned something or every time I didn't know something, I just found out what it was and I declared out loud, basically, <laughs> I just learned something new. And Good. it's fascinating. What I, I love is I would be with um, other nurses that, it, you know, we've all been nursing for, you know, many of us for like 30 years or more. And what I really appreciate is that people that don't pretend they know it all. Right. Like people yes. that are even in their field for many, many, many years will listen to something or learn something and go, I just learned something new. Yeah. Right. Declaring that out loud so that you know that because everything we do on our conscious level is what we drive down to our subconscious. Yes. And so, uh, you know, maybe I'll wind up on ending with our, our conversation today is just thank you for writing these books. Because I believe what we read and what we listen to and what we immerse ourselves in on a conscious level is also what we're going to drive into our subconscious level. And it by is. reading your book, like my prayer is that by reading your book and listening to your stories, that women out in the world are driving into their own subconscious. What can I learn today? How can I step up into my power? It doesn't always mean you're going to be going fighting and using your magic, but no. use I would say, and I'm sure you'd agree, you know, for our listening audience, use your, find your own magic. Find like your own magic. Magic is, I don't know, it could be, it could be anything. It could be continuing to enjoy dancing. It might be your handiwork. It might be, I know so many women that never knew they were artistic and picked up some paints, went to a class and now they're, they're making beautiful works. This one woman I know is making beautiful paintings and she's gifting them to her grandchildren as a legacy she takes a photograph of them and they're so touched like that is her magic she's stepping into that a is magic that is right? absolutely magic there's so many ways step up and be a mentor for someone else like there is so many way more than even when we were younger and and for those of us that were parents there are so many young women being single moms out there right now yeah they need aunts and grandmas and step in. Maybe you'll start a business to be, I, I always said I wanted to start a business called rent a grandma. I have yeah. no grandkids yet. And I would love yeah. to be sort of that grandma role. Like there's, there's so many ways to get out there and, and do that. So, and, so yeah. many. And, and yeah. we are all, we are all magic. We are yeah. just by virtue of being here. We are magic. And Absolutely. your your power is going to come in finding your joy. It's it's learning to know yourself. And Beautiful. so many of us we, that got buried, we got buried. We got buried beneath yeah. the duties and the responsibilities. And now, now is the time to find. Now is the you. time. Yeah, you can go back and uh, listen to an old, much older episode about washing off the mud, and it's exactly what you're talking about. We take on all these other roles yeah. and there's a residual of that. Now it's, let's wash that off and we'll end with the title of the first book, kind of, you know, enjoying the process of becoming crone. Becoming crone. Absolutely. Oh. Lydia, thank you for being on today's show. This <laughs> has been wonderful. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. I loved it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Take care, everyone. And don't forget on October 24th, you can catch Lydia uh, live on our uh, Fab Soul Circle meeting that night. Thank you so much for tuning in today. But before you leave, I'm curious. What pearl of wisdom are you taking away from today's episode? 
I do hope it held some inspiration or information for you to live your best life. If you are not yet part of our sisterhood, I invite you to join our community by visiting our website, fabulousat50.com, and you'll receive a free copy of our ebook, Make Mind Fabulous, 21 Ways to Energize Your Life. It is packed with loads of tips and tricks. Plus, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review to let us know what you think. Remember, keep choosing fabulous. It's never too late to live the life you deserve. Catch you on the next episode.